super simple technique is called the Pomodoro technique. And that is simply like blocking out everything you do and working on one task for 25 minutes. That's it. This sounds really simple, but it's unbelievably effective. So work on one task for 25 minutes and then take a five minute break. Welcome to the Dropship Podcast, where you'll learn how to build and grow a high ticket dropshipping business and hear stories from successful e-commerce entrepreneurs. Let's kick this thing off. Hey, welcome to the Drop Shit Podcast. And today we got a question. I'm kind of mixing together a few from our Slack. Scotty, Victor kind of threw these in there. Victor has a way of asking questions that are very unique. I, I almost want to like uh, reference his paramedic triage task list uh, type question. But th the question was around like, uh, how do you get as much stuff done as you need to get done? Like, what is your time management? How do you set measurable goals? What's your mentality around it? What's your task list? And I think you and I were kind of making some jokes earlier of like, I don't know, my task list is, uh, you know, I put it out and I start at the top and I work my way down. But there are some <laughs> things that I, I personally do to get better at this. And I still suck at this. And I'm curious, I know you use AI in some ways to like fill your calendar with this stuff. And so maybe we can give a couple tips on on things we've learned over 10 years that have helped us be more effective at, at getting shit done. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, uh, like, I, I can't help myself. I think it, it, at the outset, I just want to be clear that there's a lot of tactical stuff here and it's fun and it's good to talk about and absolutely it's good to practice and it's good to do and it's good to build into your your work day as it were or your just your day day uh but it's important to say like i don't i think a lot of people who think their problem is with time management it, it's not really with time management it's actually with being able to focus being able to be consistent being able to put the commitment into doing the work that they need to do right because the reality is being having great tactics and things in this space is fantastic. But if you don't fucking show up, like it doesn't matter. Like, so if you're somebody who gets easily distracted or procrastinates or whatever, that's not a, not having the right task lists or the right blah, 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 or the right prioritization or anything like that. That That's a different problem that you have. And so I, I want to, I want to be clear. I know we harp on about it on this show a lot about those things. Like that's bigger. Right. This, this, what we're going to talk about here comes after that. If you, you, you know, you've got to work on that as well. Because uh, if you, if you're sitting there feeling like oh, I'm not getting anything done and I feel like, um, you know, I've got this never ending list of things to do and it just gets bigger and bigger, which is real. It does. It never goes away either. Let me tell you that after 10 years, it's still getting bigger and bigger. Um, uh, like, you know, you have to ask, stop first and just ask yourself, am I actually turning up to do anything? Because if the answer to that is no or not consistently, then you probably are going to find you need to work on that first or at least in tandem um, because you're not really going to get out of anything out of setting the right priorities, for example, if you don't even show up to do your priorities properly. Do you know what I mean? So I think I'd start there, but... If you're listening in and you'd like to take the first steps towards building your own high ticket dropshipping business, head to dropshipbreakthrough.com forward slash go where we've got a free training waiting for you that's going to walk you through the first steps you need to take to start your own high ticket dropshipping business. And I'm going to walk you through an actual example of what one of these businesses looks like. You got to fucking love it. Like I was just having a talk with my employee out here. Uh, he never takes days off. When, when we see him in Salt Lake City, John, tell him, take a day off. Uh, Mr. Yeah, right. uh, so I'm telling him, take, we're recording this on the 3rd of July. And I said, take tomorrow off. Like he's like, oh, maybe I'll come in. Uh, like I'm doing a couple of calls with some of our partners tomorrow who also, uh, you know, barely want to work on a day off. Most people are taking that day off, right? And if you were working a job, you might take Wednesday off too, right? So that you have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, uh, make a nice long weekend out of this. Hmm. Um, but I'm coming like, and, and he's like, are you going to be here? And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do a couple calls. He's like, why are you coming in then? If you're telling me to take a day off and like, genuinely, I fucking love this shit. Like I love looking at my, I don't get, I don't look at a list and get anxiety from it. I look at a list and go, okay, it's going to get done one way or another. Like it, like you said, that list just keeps getting longer. And so I think if you can just shift your mentality on this to not, Oh, once I get this done, I think it comes from that place of like, when I get there, I'll be happy. And so there's all of this in front of you. 
that is blocking you from happiness. When in reality, the happiness is fucking doing the work. The, the happiness is like falling on your face and iterating and like getting better and uh, watching the, for me, it's SEO, right? Watching the pages you create, rank in Google, uh, watching the ads you have, like increase your click-through rate or whatever, whatever it is for you. Like you have to find joy in this process in the first place. Otherwise you're never going to, like John said, you're never going to show up in the first place. So um, how, how do you teach that, John? How do you teach someone to have fun? Like, uh, do you think it is a, a simple mindset issue where, they're looking at the mountain they have to climb and they can't enjoy it until they get to the top. Do you think I'm right in that? Yeah, I do. I do. And and I think that's the way I felt at the beginning. Like thinking back, that that's kind of like the beginner's mindset, I think. Is like, because you, you, you started business, you had this big lofty goal usually in your mind. Like, oh, I, wouldn't it be fantastic if I was wealthy and I had blah, 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 and I had this and I had that and you don't realize what it takes to get there in the beginning. Like you don't truly realize you might've heard people talk about it. You might've heard me and Ben talk about like, there's a lot more behind the scenes that you've never seen for those successful people. And you've probably heard countless people say that a lot of people say it these days. And, um, but you don't really understand that when you've never done it before, when you've never been in, in, in that journey, right? You only start to understand it as you get into it. And I, it's, this is just one of those other things. I'm like, like, because I'm the same as you. Like, I mean, I, I love doing it. Um, and when I look at my big to-do list, and it's always big, like I'm excited by it. I mean, yeah, sometimes I'm like, oh, fuck, that's a lot of work. Like, that's really going to suck to do all of that. Some of those things are really time-consuming or they're annoying or they're frustrating or whatever. But at the same time, I look at it and go, holy shit, there's so much money in that to-do list. Like, or there's so much growth. There's so much potential. I can't wait till we get to do all that stuff. I don't know when we're going to get to do it all, but like, I can't wait till we do because it's going to be amazing. Right. And so like I, I say, like your to-do list is your opportunity list. Like that's kind of how I look at it. That's the mindset thing. Let's, I'm like, Oh yeah, I've got a four pages worth of opportunities ahead of me in life. I mean, to me, that's much better than sitting there and looking at a blank sheet of paper and going, Oh, right, that's it for the next 30 years. I got nothing <laughs> like, I would much rather be with the long to-do list that is overwhelming and a bit scary and all of that sort of thing. But, but um, I don't know when that shift happened for me though. Once again, I, I, I just, it's one of those things I can't, you always ask me like, so how did you make this jump, John? And I sit here and I go, uh, hmm, I don't know. It just kind of happened, mm. right? It's been more of a subtle gradual thing for me. And I don't know, I, I'd probably say that kind of flipped around maybe five years ago. I'm not a scientist, so I'm going to, I'm going to botch this, but there is yeah. some science behind the mechanism in your body from short-term dopamine versus delayed gratification. It is a completely different, uh, chemical sure. function in your body. And so like you can pop open your phone. In fact, you might get a dopamine hit, just like grabbing your phone out of your pocket. You might mm. get the little right. drip that you need, right? Like, uh, yeah. you're chasing the dragon, if you will. Uh, but if you can find joy in doing these things and accomplishing something, you will get so much bigger of a reward um, via that long delayed gratification, long-term dopamine. Again, I'm not a scientist. Uh, uh, I could point you to some podcasts who talk deeper on this stuff. I think that's when I fell in love. It's like, that, that, that is what life is, is accomplishing things. So whether I'm here building a business or whether, uh, honestly, I could probably go play golf every single day um, for sure every morning, maybe all day, but every single day. And I would get better at golf and every day I would feel good because I'm getting better at something like it, and whatever that is for you, I encourage it to be business. Cause that's what we're here for. Um, <clears throat> but you have to get better at something as you move along in life or you're dead inside, I guess. And so like, that's, that's why I love doing it every day, right? Like I love coming mm -hmm. here and like, I see the task list, I get done with it. Most days I don't even realize all the shit I did. In fact, I'm trying to look for a new way to like, rather than delete the task list, put it into something else so that I can circle back and be like, okay, on the 3rd of July, I did, you know, these 19 things so that I can show myself I did some stuff. Cause sometimes my ego doesn't think I did anything, but like for the most part, you're getting stuff done. You're moving forward and you can see that progress. And eventually you'll start hitting some of the goals that you've set. And when you hit those goals, you'll get the long-term dopamine. You'll also get the, yay, now what? And you'll set another goal and you'll just do it again, right? It's kind of like that um, that South Park episode when they when they kill the guy in the world of Warcraft and they're like, yeah, we did it. And they're all like pimply and fat, you know? Uh, and then they're like, what do we do now? And like, oh, we, we can actually play the game now, right? And so like, just like, it's just the next thing. There's always going to be another thing. And so the more you dread the first thing in front of you, the more you're going to dread the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. There's, there's a never ending to-do list and that's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I want to give some tactical stuff though, John, one, one of the yeah. things that helped me really early on 
super simple technique is called the Pomodoro technique. Right. And that is simply like blocking out everything you do and working on one task for 25 minutes. That's it. This sounds really simple, but it's unbelievably effective. So work on one task for 25 minutes and then take a five minute break. I would encourage you to like go walk around outside, go move, go do some air squats, do something. Don't grab your phone for the fuck, for the, for the love of God, don't grab your phone for those five minutes because that'll turn into 20 minutes. Uh, and don't navigate off to another tab to look at Facebook or TikTok or whatever you look at. Um, and then come back and set another timer for 25 minutes and work on another task or the same task for 25 more minutes. And if you could just do those focused pockets of work, I would hazard to say that if you do four of those in a row, you will get more work done in that two hours than you got done probably all of the last week in your business. And I genuinely mean that because I don't think people have focused work. Um, I, I don't remember who taught me this, but they, they reference like buying a $5 clock on Amazon. That's like a, one of those clocks, almost like when you're playing chess and you're like hitting the stop and the go timer and put it on the desk next to you and like hit go and then work on something. And the moment you get distracted, hit stop. And then at the end of the day, look how long you actually worked. And I think you'd be shocked at how little amount of time you actually spent working on your business versus like dilly dallying, watching YouTube video, checking social media, doing whatever it is that you are doing to find a reason to not do the work. And, and believe me, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm uh, case number one of like finding ways to not do the work. I, I literally play a poker tournament almost all day long while I'm working uh, just to slightly distract me because I can't get away from this stuff. And so, uh, that's been effective for me though. The, the Pomodoro is where I shut everything off. I have notifications mm. off already, but shut everything off and work for 25 minutes straight on one task. I think you'd be shocked how much you can actually get done in 25 minutes. Yep. Yep. Definitely. And you can even buy like Pomodoro clocks. You can buy like little Pomodoro yeah, timers. There's like there's products. Chrome there, extensions. Yeah. 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 Yep. So, you know, I, I think, yeah, that, that's a, that's an oldie bit of goodie for sure. Um, and I think what's nice about that, once again, it's not really the time period to me. It's just like the, training yourself to be able to sit still for like for some people it's just training yourself for any amount of time just to sit there and focus like for a lot of people these days that in and of itself is a challenge so whether you do it for 25 minutes whether you do it for an hour whether you do it for 30 minutes whatever i mean i don't think it really matters um but uh yeah that, that's that's a really good one i like that one i like that one i, um, I spent a lot of years pushing away from organization right like I, mm. I was told it wasn't normal and like, fuck yeah i want to not be normal and i'll show you and then over time i've realized through this process you have to live by your calendar right and so i've started to live by my calendar but you've taken it to another level john can you like walk through what you're doing with like putting your task list into ai and how that's like filling your calendar with stuff that you do like you you you've showed me what it looks like it's 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 appealing to me um but do you live and die by your calendar and how does the ai process actually work for you yeah, I do. And and more so in recent times, I've once again, I've tried to be really strict with it. And once again, I'm like you. I mean, I, I never viewed myself as like a particularly organized person. And I think that's really just self-talk that people get like built into, get built into them or build into themselves earlier in life. And, and it's just a lie. Anybody can be organized. Like saying to yourself, I'm not an organized person. That's just the story you're telling yourself. Uh, and I, I mean, I you know, you've got to get, organized or you've got to get people to help you be organized like there, there's there's many different ways you can go about this but um I, I think you have to um and you can but yeah so i i do live very much by a calendar um because i find when i don't um i i would just get distracted like like there's a million things i could work on at any one point in time and if i don't actually put it into something and then just stick to that um i find i'll i'll just i'll go down rabbit holes i'll get distracted i'll work on things i'll, I'll get sucked into working on things which feel urgent but are not necessarily the big movers right so that they feel so it's like uh, i think we'll circle back to this in a moment like prioritization because i do think that's important but um like I just get off track too easily. It's not that I'm not doing anything. It's just, I'm not doing the things I actually want to be doing. I find myself just doing like 57 different things rather than the three or four big things that will really, that I really need to get done. Do you know what I mean? And so um, I use a tool um, called motion uh, and there are other tools out there. I'm sure like this these days, but I use a tool called motion. We should really get an affiliate link probably and put it in the episode where you can go and check out motion.com forward slash motion. <laughs> motion. Yeah. Um, uh, which is basically like a calendar. Like it, the, the, the interface for the tool looks just like a calendar, 
like your iCal or you know like whatever you use a Google, a Google Calendar, um, and you feed it basically a to-do list, um, and uh, you know you can tell it how long you'd like to spend doing each task on your to-do list, um, and what it will do is it will put that into a calendar for you, um, like. It will come up with the order of things to do. It'll put it into a calendar. It will sync with your other calendars. So if you're like me and you have days and times of the week where you have phone calls with people, um, yeah, there's a little kind of looks a little mine looks a little bit different to that, but that's that's about it. Um, it will sync with those other calendars and, and and put your tasks around other things that you have either in your personal calendar or if you have a business calendar. Um, or if you know you still work in a job and maybe you're working remotely or something, and you have a, a calendar for your things you got to do for work. If you're still in a job, for example, it can work around that as well. Um, and you can you can prioritize tasks. So it and it, it will order your calendar in a way that you get things that have a high priority done, uh, and it will push other things back for you. And um, so it's uh, you can also use this for teams as well. It has a teams function. So, you know, if you have uh, employees in your dropshipping business, you can also build them. You can have like team calendars um, and you can assign things to people and, um, you know, plan out what individual team members should be doing and, and their prioritization and, and this sort of thing. So I haven't actually used it to that level yet with, with an actual team in a business. Uh, I'd like to uh, probably test that out somewhere because I think it's on an individual level, it's a good tool for, for me. It helps. Um, and like you might, you check things off as you go. Like, yeah, I've done that task. Yeah, I've done that task. And if you don't check it off, it will automatically reorganize your schedule to put that thing back in somewhere else. Like if you do have something where you get taken away from your desk unexpectedly and you miss a task in your thing, it will just reorganize it and it'll push it to another day or another time slot in your in your calendar and so i kind of like at the start of the week you know or sometimes on a sunday evening i'll just put together my task list and you can do it over multiple weeks as well you don't have to do it on a week by week basis i've i've always done my t my to-do list on a week to week basis so I, I just that's just the way i've trained myself to do it that's how i do it i've been doing that for years um I'll just come up with it. What's the list of the things I really want to get done? What are the things that I have to get done this week because they're time specific? And then I'll plug them in there. I'll give it a prioritization. Um, and then it just puts it all together for me. So I don't, I don't have to think about it. And the point of this is to take the stress out of having to think about it. Um, but like I say, it, it will set it up for you, but you've got to actually stick to it. Yeah. Right. And, and that's what I'm going back to what I said at the start of the episode, like, just having the tools and having the, the, the tactic isn't necessarily enough. You've got to make yourself then go and do that. Um, but I find it's a very um, helpful way uh, for me to just take the, the guesswork out of what should I be doing when um, and actually like it, it will send me reminders. Um, you know, you can do um, – things like uh you know like for me i'm i'm an apple bobo like like you ben uh you know you you can like when you've got an idea for something you need to do like let's say you're out having a walk and you've got an idea you can pick up your phone and go um hey siri motion say the task say when you want to do it say what its priority is and it'll motion will hook it up and it'll put it straight into your into your calendar like you don't even have to use your hands you don't have to type or anything um, you can you can just do it with your voice recognition on your device. Your your device's AI will hook up with it and help you out with that. Um, so yeah, that's that's a cool tool. Um, and and once again, tools are cool. Uh, but I used to do that with paper as well for years. Like my to do list was just a paper to do list, um, and I I used to do my own prior, prioritization and that sort of thing. And I, and I think that's um, that's a part of it. And I want to go back to like. That we're kind of talking about the end of it here, like the little tactics, but I think, you know, the things that you need to get better at time management is you need, you need a vision, right? So like starting, starting at the start, I'll put my thumb away. You need a, one, you need a vision. So a, a few episodes back, we talked about this. We talked about dreamlining. We talked about the vivid vision. You start at the vision. Then you got to take your vision and break that down into a series of goals, right? Because that's going to be your big thing. You need to then chunk that into a series of goals, 
right? And then for each of those, you need to work out, well, what do I need to do to get there? Um, and, and that's going to then start to define, well, what are the tasks I need to work on in my business to get there? Uh, and then you, you should break that down into like yearly things. Like your, your big vision is probably going to be like, it's going to take you some years to get there, right? So what do you need to, what, what do you need to hit each year in an increasing way to get there? Then you want to break that down into quarters. So I give a shout out to the book Traction, Gino Wickman. We've mentioned it on this show before. Fantastic book. Uh, if you want to find a method of goal setting uh, and planning that definitely works, and I know a lot of people who have worked with this book, Traction, go and get the Traction book. Uh, we'll, put a, we'll put a link in with this episode for it. Um, traction book, it has a, it has a follow-on book as well that the name escapes me, um, which is also like good. Feel. Yep. Uh, go and read that. Like, uh, use that. Use the framework in that book. It comes with links to all of the, to a lot of like helpful uh, like documents you can use to help you actually document this out. I would recommend it hugely. Um, so you need like, you need the goals. You need a plan, right? You need a plan. If you're going to build a business and grow a business, you need, to, you need to have a plan. Like we give you that in Dropship Breakthrough. So, I mean, if you're not in our program and you're listening to this and you're just like, well, I kind of know what I need to do, but like I'm kind of making it up as I go as well. Like that's really hard. It's going to be really hard for you to be effective with your time if you're constantly making it up. Whereas if you're following a plan, uh, you know what the steps are that are coming up. You can see what they are. You know what you have to do. We, we take that guesswork out of you. We basically say for you, you need to do this, then 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 you need to do this. And you can go, great. Those are the things I need to do. Then you just got to work out what order do I need to do them in? And then that then breaks down into all of your little, your weekly tasks and things like that. Um, and so you need a you need a big vision. You need that broken down into goals that are time bound um, and obviously realistic and increasing in nature. You need the plan. Um, you need to know what the items on your to-do list are. And then you need to be able to prioritize those. Like once again, and I think this is where people get tripped up a little bit with feeling like they're making progress or, or having a sense of momentum is that you, it's really easy in business to get sucked into working on a lot of really small things. Like there, there's a lot of moving parts here, right? Particularly in the beginning, like most of the people we're talking to here are people who are going to be doing it all themselves. Now, over time, part of time management is building a team really and having other people take on that time burden, right? Uh, and taking it off yourself. But in the beginning, you're going to be doing everything yourself. And so, being able to identify what are the things that I actually need to spend most of my time on. I think that's where people go wrong a lot as well. And so part of your day, whatever amount of time you're working each day, uh, whether it's two hours, whether it's four hours, whether it's six hours, whether it's all day, whether you're putting in 18 hours, whatever it is, you need to dedicate at least a portion of that time to the big things in your business that are really going to move the needle, but maybe take a bit longer to move the needle, right? So an example of this would be that it would be really easy in a high ticket dropshipping business to know that you need to do SEO and you know you need to start implementing that and you know that you need to work on that strategy and the tactics associated with it, but it's not going to do anything straight away right? Because it takes a little bit of time. So in some cases, a, a longer amount of time. You know you need to do it, but it would be much easier to say, well, I'm just going to hang out in my Google Ads account, or I'm just going to answer emails all day, or I'm just going to tinker around with my website design, or I'm just going to do things that feel more immediate in terms of their results. But in the long run, are no, going to be nowhere near as big for your business. And are going to have nowhere near the impact on your business as something as a, you know, implementing a strategy like SEO. And so what a lot I see a lot of people doing is they'll just dick around in the smaller stuff day after day after day um, or convince themselves to watch videos because they're learning and they think that's doing, which it's not. Um, 
and and put off those bigger things, which are seem like a lot of work, but have a massive impact over time. So I think you have to be really careful when you set up your weekly and your daily to-do list to make sure that at least for you've got some period of focused work on those bigger things. And once again, if you've got the plan and you've got the longer term strategy for your business, then you're going to know what those bigger things are. Like I said, if you're in Dropship Breakthrough, we're going to right up straight up front tell you what those things are. We told you what those things are on this podcast as well. Um, but you've got to make sure you're spending some time on those as well as doing the things that feel really urgent. Like you've got to do them right now, like answering your emails or whatever it might be. And, and yeah, you do need to have a portion of your time that deals with those as well, but it's a lot less than you think. And so whatever, whatever tool you use um, to, to put that down, like I say, I, I mean, I, I think the tools here are uh, far less important. Um, they are helpful, no doubt. But if you do all of this on a piece of paper and you stick to it, you're still winning. Thanks for listening to the Dropship Podcast. You can find all the show notes for this episode at dropshippodcast.com. And if you're ready to take the next step in your dropshipping journey, we invite you to join us inside Dropship Breakthrough, where John and I will walk you through step-by-step -step in starting your own high-ticket dropshipping e-commerce business. But that's not all. Dropship Breakthrough will also teach you everything you'll need to know to grow your business and take it to the next level. So head over to dropshipbreakthrough.com and sign up for our free training that will help you take the first steps towards building and growing your own profitable high-ticket dropshipping business.